Hello students, I welcome you all to this video on quantitative aptitude. In this video, we'll be solving a few questions with regards to quantitative aptitude and I'll give you some tricks to solve the solutions of this question very easily in a matter of few seconds. Let, let's start with the first question now. 12 persons can complete a piece of work in 10 days working six hours then how many men will be required to do double the work in eight days working five hours so here most important aspect is that we have to understand what is the data given in front of us so if you see there 12 people are working in the first instance they are working for 10 days and on each day they are working for six hours right now Taking this data into account, we have to find out there is one more work which is double, right? Whatever work has been finished here. In the second instance, they have to do the double, double the work. And they have to finish that work within eight days. And they are working only for five days and uh, five hours a day, right? So taking this data into account, we have to find out how many men will be required. So whenever you come across problems like this, where people, men, working hours, or total amount of work is required. That is what you have to find out. Very simple. Just plug in this formula. And this formula, you need not remember also. See, P for people, right? Persons into days, that is D. And then time, that is hours, right? H divided by total work. Yes, because you have to find out once data set is given, keeping that data set into mind, you have to find out the next one, right? So just repeat the formula once again. P into D into H. What is P here? Persons or people, number of people, D, number of days, and H, number of working hours per day. What is TW then? Total work. So let us plug in the data with regards to the first set of uh, data that is given. So 12 persons, right? So P instead of P, let's write 12. How many days have they worked for? They worked for 10 days. And per day, what was the working hour? 6 hours. And they have clearly mentioned complete a piece of work. So total work, 1. Okay. Just like that, you have to plug in data here now. Have they given number of people to us? No. So let's keep P as it is. How many days they have worked for or they should work for? Eight days. And then per day, what is the number of working hours? Five. And if total work, uh, total work here is one, here it should be double. That is one into 2 or you can write 2 directly. Now you just have to cross multiply and then simplify will get the answer. So P is equal to, let me write it here itself, 12 into 10 into 6 and this will be multiplied by 2, correct? The 2 which is in denominator will go to the other side will become multiplication divided by 8 into 5. Now we are done with this. 5 ones are 5 twos. 2 ones are 2, 2 twos are 4. 4 ones are 4, 4 threes are 12. So 3 into 2, 6. 6 into 6. 36. So, how many men are required? You require 36 men here. The right answer is 36. Let's go to the next question now. This is an interesting question. There will be one formula that you have to understand, that you have to apply whenever you come across any questions where they will ask you total number of squares in so and so bold, right? So, what is the total number of squares in a 4 into 4 bold, right? 
So whenever they are asking you number of squares in a particular board, just apply this formula n into n plus 1 into 2n plus 1. See, formula is so easy, right? You need not stress over how to buy hard this. Just n into n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 1. Uh, into 2n plus 1 divided by 6. You have to divide everything by 6. So, what number will you take for n here? The question itself gives away the uh, solution for you. n is 4. So, 4, n plus 1, 4 plus 1, 5, 2n plus 1, 2 into 4, 8, plus 1, 9, divided by 6. 2, 2 za, 2, 3 za, 3, 1 za, 3, 3 za. So now, 2, 5 za, 10, 10, 3 za, 30. So the answer, number of squares in a 4 into 4 board is 30. Okay. So as simple as that. Let's go to the next one now. This is once again an interesting question that is there in front of us. Let's see how to solve this. A student got an average score of 70 in eight subjects. However, it was later found that marks in two subjects were taken mistakenly as 74 and 66 instead of actual scores of 70 and 78. What is his correct average? So, we have to find out what is the correct average here. So, first of all, because they have given you average number and also n, so you can easily find out total. Of obviously, how do you find out average? So, write down the average formula. Average is equal to total divided by n, correct? Now, they have given us average. They have also given us number of items. In this case, it is number of subjects, right? So, total is equal to, total is equal to 70, that is average, into n, correct? And n is 8 here. 8 seven is a 56. So, 8, 70 is a 560. So the student had scored 560, right, in eight subjects. Now, you just have to plug in the data given there. What are the two scores which have been taken mistakenly? 74 and 66. So what should you do there? You have to deduct that, correct? 74 minus 66. What is his actual score? 74. No, sorry, 70 and 78, correct? So, 74 and 66 were taken mistakenly, where 70 and 78 should have been taken. Now, many students, what will you do is, you will first deduct 74 from 560, then you will deduct 66 from 560, then you will add 70, then you will add 78, don't do that. You can cancel out. See, 74 minus 74 plus 70. So, what will remain? Plus 4 will remain, correct? Once again, minus 66 plus 70 plus 4 will remain. So, 560 plus 4 plus 4, 568. This is the total. We, we have been asked to find out what is his correct average, correct? So, 568 divided by Ami. Subjects, eight subjects. Eight ones are eight, sevens are fifty-six, eight ones are eight. So seventy-one is the correct average, right? So very simple question and a very simple answer to that question. Let's go to the next one now. The average age of a family of six members is twenty-two years. If the age of the youngest member be seven years, the average age of the family at the birth of the youngest member was, okay. So they have given you a question, 
they have twisted certain things. Just have to apply common sense here. You'll easily get the answer. First of all, once again, every age is given and also number of members are also given. So can we find out total age of the family? Right? Total age of the family now, right? At this time. Now. So 22 is the average age. Number of people in the family is six. So total age of the family is 132 years. Okay. Next, we have to go because the youngest member was, yeah. member is seven years old. We have to go back, right? At the birth of the youngest member means we have to go back seven years. So earlier, earlier, correct? So seven years ago. So obviously what will happen? 132 is the total now. If we go back seven years, we have to deduct that seven years, right? So 125. Please understand, should not stop here. If you go back seven years, will only the youngest member's age reduce? Everyone's age will reduce by seven. Yes or no? So out of six people, we have taken out seven, which is of only one person. What about the remaining five? Their age also we have to deduct. So seven, you have to go back, right? Seven years, that's why seven. And how many members age, you should still deduct five, right? At the birth of the youngest member, that is before the birth of the youngest member, there are five people in the family. The youngest member's age is seven, you have already deducted, you have come to 125. Most of you will do this, there's no problem. This is where you'll probably make mistakes. What is that? Just like seven years ago, one person's age reduces by seven, everyone's age should reduce by seven, correct? So seven minus five, 35. So 125 minus 35. So seven years ago, ago the total age of the family will be 90. Do we want the total or we want the average? We want average. So what we should do? 90 divided by which number? 6 or 7. Youngest member was still not born, right? So that's why 5. 5 ones are 5 ones are 8. Correct? 18 years. So 7 years ago, at the birth of youngest member, the average age of the family was 18 years. It is 22 now, 7 years ago it was 18 years. I hope you have understood this also. Let's go to the next one. A can complete a job in 9 days, B in 10 days and C in 15 days. B and C start the work and are forced to leave after 2 days. The number of days taken by A to finish the remaining work. Have they given you total work here? They have not given you total work. They have given you remaining work. That is also not given. But they have said that if any work is there, if B, if A alone does it, it takes 9 days. If B alone does it, it takes 10 days. If C alone does it, it takes 15 days. But B and C have started to work together and they are forced to leave after two days. So B and C. First, let us understand. If A takes nine days to complete a work, in one day, what portion of work will he finish? Just take the reciprocal of nine, that is one by nine. So in one day, A will complete one ninth of the work, correct? B, he will finish one tenth of the work. And C, C will finish one fifteenth of the work, correct? Now, what have they clearly told us? B and C work for two days, correct? B and C work for 
two days. So B plus C, one by ten plus one by fifteen into two. Why into two? Because in one day B finishes one tenth, C finishes one fifteen, but they work for two days. So denominator is different here. Ten and fifteen. When you take the LCM, you'll get the lowest common multiple as thirty. So ten threes are thirty. One threes are three. Fifteen twos are thirty. So one twos are two. And then you have to multiply this by two. So five into two. Ten divided by thirty. That is one by three. So already, what portion of work is done? One by three. Correct. One third portion of work is done. How much is remaining then? Two third portion of work is remaining. If uh, A takes nine days to complete the full work, how many days does he want to complete two third work? Just to multiply by number of days he takes to complete the full work, right? So three ones are three, three is a two three is a six. See, I tell you once again, if he takes, there is let's say one work to do, he completes that in nine days, right? He does not have full work to complete. He has only two third work to, correct? We are essentially cross multiplying. So two into uh, two by three into nine, three ones are three threes are two threes are six. So how many days does he want? He wants six days. Let's go to the next one. He spent twenty percent of his monthly earning on house rent. Out of the balance, he spent seventy-five percent on other house expenses. If he had a balance of rupees two fifty at the end of the month, the monthly earning of the man is so. If you do this in you no know, a particular chart that I show you, a flow chart that I will teach you. You will be able to solve this problem very easily. So, have we been given of what is his total income? No, but they are they have given the expenditure in percentage part. So, it is easy for us to assume that income is hundred. Correct. So, let us assume income is equal to hundred. Okay. Why have we taken hundred? Because expenditure is given in percentage terms, so if income is hundred, what does he do out of hundred? See here, that this is his income, correct? Okay. Now twenty percent he spends it on minus twenty percent. Twenty percent of hundred is twenty, correct? So if we deduct minus twenty here. How much remains? Eighty. So he spends twenty on clothing, uh, house rent, right? Out of this eighty, seventy-five percent minus seventy-five percent minus seventy-five percent. See here, seventy-five percent of eighty. How do you find out? One fourth is twenty-five percent. Correct. So one fourth of eighty is twenty. We want seventy five percent, right? So twenty, forty, sixty. So we have to deduct sixty from eighty. Let me repeat once again. Seventy five percent is three fourth, right? One fourth is twenty five. We all know that one fourth of hundred is twenty five. So one fourth of eighty will be twenty. Three fourth of eighty will be sixty. So if we deduct sixty from eighty, how much will remain? Twenty will remain. So, if you see here, remaining is twenty, right? Essentially, that means out of hundred, twenty remains. This is twenty percent, correct? If twenty percent is two fifty, how much is hundred then? You just have to find out, right? See, if twenty 
is 250 100 is how much see i'll tell you a simple tick here so you need not go for cross multiplication 20 into how many times is 100 20 into 5 times is 100 right so just find out what is 250 into 5 250 into 5 is 1000 and 250 into so 250 into 4 is 1000 and into 1 250 right 1250 so 250 into 5 is 1250 you can do this in another way also 250 into 10 is 2500 correct and half of 2500 is 1250 half of 10 is 5 half of 2500 is 1250 so you can find out an answer for this in multiple ways let's go to the next question now here you'll have to apply a formula very simple problem if a train runs at 40 km per hour it reaches its destination by a late by 11 minutes but if it runs at 50 km per hour it is late by 5 minutes only the correct time for the train to complete its journey is so what has happened let's say it runs at 40 kilometers per hour so actual time right whatever should be the time that it has to reach it is late by 11 minutes correct so whatever is the time it takes 11 minutes more correct so we are assuming t as it is why because they have not given us what is the correct time. We have to find it out. And if it runs at 50 kilometers per hour, so then whatever time it should reach, rather than reaching on time, it reaches late by 5 minutes. I hope you have understood by now why we are adding, because the train is late. If the train was early, we would have deducted, correct? Now, see here. Is it re reaching the same destination? In both the case, though it, it is reaching late in first instance by 11 minutes, in the second instance by 5 minutes, in both the cases, destination is same. So can we write it like this? 40 into t plus 11 is equal to 50 into t plus 5. Can we write this? Yes, you are right. Why are we writing this equal to because in both the cases, destination is the same, correct? So now just uh, multiply, take out the parenthesis. 40 into t, 40 t plus 40 into 11, 440. And then 50 into t, 50 t plus 50 into 5, 250. So, this 250 will come on the other side, 40 will on, come on the other side, 10t, 50, 50t minus 40t, 10t is equal to 440 minus 250, that is 190, correct? 190. If 10t is equal to 190, how much will it t be equal to 190 divided by 10? 19 minutes. Correct? 19 minutes is the correct answer for this question. So, what is the time, actual time that it should reach the destination? 19 minutes. Okay. I hope you have answered the same way. Let's go to the next question. You don't need anything here. Just logical reasoning. Just if you understand the question correctly, you'll take the answer directly. See here, 12% of x, if 12% of x is equal to 6% of y, then 18% of x will be equal to what percent of y? What does he essentially says? Half of 12% is 6%. Half of 18% is how much? 9%. Let me prove this to you. Let's say x is equal to 100 and y is equal to 200. Okay. See there, 
they have given two different variables. That means the value will change, correct, right? So 12% of 100 will be 12. 6% of 200 will be 12. 18% of 100 is how much? 18. Then what percent of 200 will be 18? Correct. So just this, half of 12 is 6%. So half of 18% will be 9%. Direct answer. You need not do anything here, any calculation. Just looking by solution, just looking at the options that are there, you can answer this question directly. Interesting question once more. A fruit seller or a fruit seller purchased 12 oranges for a rupee. How many must he sell for a rupee to make a profit of 20%? Simple question. For one rupee, how many oranges has he purchased? 12 oranges. Right? Now, see here, keep this in mind. If he sells everything, don't look at the question. If he sells everything, at what price should he sell to make a 20% profit? So he has to sell it at 1.20, correct? 20% of 1 is 20 paisa. So if he is selling everything, then he has to sell it at 1.20. How many oranges are there? 12 oranges. If 12 oranges are sold at 1 rupee 20 paisa, then 1 orange will be sold at, yes, you have got the right answer, 10 paisa, right? has to sell it at 10 paise per orange. So for what amount is he selling? For a rupee. So for a rupee, how many oranges will he sell? Into 10. Correct? 10 paise into 10 is 1 rupee. So how many oranges should he sell to make a profit of 20%? 10 oranges. I'll repeat this once again for you. One For 1 rupee, he gets 12 oranges. He wants to make a profit of 20%. So if he sells all the oranges, he has to sell it at 1 rupee 20 paisa, right? So that essentially means one orange will be sold at 10 paisa. He wants to sell it at 1 rupee. So how many oranges will be sold? 10 paisa into 10 is equal to 1 rupee. So he has to sell 10 oranges. Last question with regards to quantitative aptitude and a simple question once again in front of you. Ritu spends 10% of her total income on clothing, 30% on rent, 20% on food, and 20% on miscellaneous expenditures. If she is left with 4,500 as her savings, what is her total income? See, yes, students, once again, they have given income and expenditure, and income we have to find out. Expenditure has been given in percentage terms, correct? So now let us once again assume income as, so the income is assumed to be 100, correct? Out of this 100 rupees, she is spending on various categories, correct? So 10% out of 100, she is spending on clothing. So clothing. Next, 30%, she is spending it on rent. Rent. Next, 20% on foot. 20% on foot. Now, and 20% on miscellaneous expenditure. 20% on miscellaneous expenditure. And now they are given. She has an amount remaining with her, which is 4,500. We have to find out how much is that 4,500 in percentage terms. Okay. So 10% plus 30%, 40, plus 20, 60, plus 20, 80. Right. So 80% is already spent. How much is remaining? 20% is remaining. This is a savings part. Correct. So 20% is savings. So, if 20% is 4,500, can you find out 100%? Easy, right? 20 into 5 is 100. 
4,500 into 5 will get the answer. So, 4,000 into 5 is 20,000. 500 into 5 is 2,500. So, total income that is 100% will be 22,500. See here, we get the same answer. 20 into 5 is 100. So, 4,500 into 5 will be 22,500. Is that option available? Yes. Option A is the correct answer. So, I hope this question, the uh, model question paper solution that we have provided for you was useful and you have learned something new from that. Now, the onus is on you. Take the exam, give the exam calmly. You'll have a wonderful time and I'm sure you'll have a wonderful life ahead also. Thank you so much, students, for listening to me. It was a pleasure teaching you all. Thank you.